we're live and today is Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. Today we are going to uh, do one of my favorite uh, energetic techniques. It's a little sophisticated. This is something I normally only share with like advanced students um, who have a lot of knowledge and experience under their belts, but it's Valentine's Day. So let's go ahead and challenge ourselves. <sighs> Valentine's Day is all about love. Now today I wanna to talk a little bit about how we connect, what is love, how we connect with it, what is like our choice and what is action, what is reaction and what just is. Because um, a lot of us don't think about it. We're just going through life reacting to things and then our emotions are the response of a reaction as opposed to claiming all aspects of our self and well-being. Hi, Nazi. Glad you could join us. So first, I want to talk about what is love. Love is actually the beginning of everything. Everything and... All right, Pris, let me give a little disclaimer. I'm just sharing the world <laughs> from how I see it and how I was taught. Uh, those of you who know me, know that I am, uh, I was brought into this life for the purpose of teaching the world lessons from the librarians of the Akashic Records. When I'm not in life, my soul is up there working with the librarians. When I am in life, most nights when I leave my body, I'm up there with them. And during the daytime when I'm conscious here, they come down and they're hanging out with me. So I'm with the librarians the vast majority of my time on this planet, or they're with me. It used to scare the heck out of me when I was a little kid. <laughs> but anyway, so I, I am a student of the librarians. Almost everything I know, I have learned either from them or through them um, or through other divine, non-physical beings that work with me because of the work that I do. Um, but I've also studied with 3D physical humans. So today's lesson is not from any person that I've studied with. Today's lesson and our act meditation coming up is purely from what I've learned from my non-physical teachers. We're speaking, like everything I say, think of it in terms of this lesson, not in all reality. So I'm gonna talk about depression and anxiety. If you have clinical depression and you need to see a therapist and take medication, do not think of this in place of that. I am not saying, making any blanket statements. I just wanna make sure everyone knows. I'm giving you something to think about, to add to your current life, not to replace your concepts, beliefs, or current life. This is really important. This is why I normally only teach this to advanced students, because I, if you feel in any way like what I'm saying is a bit much, feel welcome to contact me. I'd be glad to do more live streams and, you know, give everyone the base of support if you need more. So I spend a lot of time outside of my body traveling to other dimensions, to far corners of galaxies, universes. I, I've always done that. It's not like suddenly I do that. In this life, I've always done that. Where our souls are created is a place of pure love. Not just our souls, all souls. All souls are created equal. It doesn't matter if you are an antelope or an angel or a demon, or an earthworm, or a person, or a Lemurian, or what. All souls are created equal. We are created from a state of pure love. And we are in this place 
the cone of inception. So I call it sort of like a nursery for fresh souls until our resonance comes in and our individual frequencies are created, naturally evolve, not created, naturally evolve that lets us know what kind of species are being we're in harmony with to then go and uh, grow with whoever it is that comes and claims you because you're in the frequency of their species or dimension or collective. So understand, every one of us begins as a spark of pure love, pure love and light. That's it. That's all we are, every one of us. At the beginning, if you think the angels are so much better than you, there was a time when you guys were exactly the same. We are all created through love. And we don't stop being what we are. Like, think about all the years of therapy we go through as adults dealing with issues we went through when we were like three years old or five years old. Oh, hi, Lucia. Happy Valentine's Day to you as well. Thank you. So we go through years of therapy dealing with our childhood issues of this life. Like I, as a, an adult Bonita, I still have the six-year-old Bonita in me. I still have the baby Bonita in me. I have the awkward, angry 12-year-old Bonita in me. You know, we have all of that who we are in us. You also have, and you know, we go through whatever life, dealing with, resolving, releasing, learning karmic lessons, going on our life path. When you have something resolved and released and you're at a place of like returning to love, returning to harmony, you find that that issue when the karmic lesson is done no longer bothers you. Um, and that's, that's a whole, like my regular students know I teach entire long classes on dealing with your karmic lessons in life and resolving them and releasing them so they no longer hang on you. But one thing every living being in every dimension has is that spark of our original source. You know, our spark of our original self, which is a being of pure love. When we were pure, innocent, light, and love, we have that in all of us. And that is actually the purest, truest element residing in every one of us. We can ignore it. We can abuse it, we can be angry with it, we can embrace it, we can allow it to go from a spark to a full light. We can do what we want with it, you know, so long as we're aware it's there and we learn to like acknowledge it and work with it. This is our choice. So what is real is each of us has a spark of love in it in us. What is our choice is what we do with it. Or if we even acknowledge it. Like some of you may be going, I have a spark of light in me. Why didn't anyone tell me? Yeah, well, I'm telling you, this is what happens when humanity steps so far off our collective life path that we don't even acknowledge the truth that is like inherent within each of us. We know a reality. Things happen in life. Things do happen. Things happen that are planned karmic lessons, and things happen because they just happen. Things happen because maybe you refuse to complete a karmic lesson, so therefore things will get worse and worse and rougher and rougher until finally you have no choice but like die or learn from it and go forward. You know, things happen, and everything that happens leaves an imprint. We don't always have a choice of what happens. We do have a choice of what we do with this within us in response to what happens. At the moment, there's a lot of trauma happening on our planet. There is a lot of trauma happening in the United States government. For some of us, there's a lot of trauma happening. Well, for all of us, there's trauma happening in our lives. For some of us, it's really traumatic. 
our health is suffering, our finances are suffering, so much, you know, trauma. But how we respond to that trauma is our choice. Now, I'm not saying if you're like, oh my God, I am so stressed out. I have so much anxiety because there's real trauma pounding at my front door that you can choose to just be like, I mean, obviously trauma must be acknowledged, but learning to respond to trauma in your healthiest way is the hugest karmic gift we can bring to ourselves. What I mean is we do not dismiss the seriousness of the issue, but we do say, how much of the horror do I want to absorb and how much do I acknowledge and then go forward? So I find if there's something that's a little difficult for me to go, I don't really get what I'm saying, I don't get what you're saying or that doesn't fit, Whatever the issue is, I'll look at it from a bigger perspective or a much smaller perspective. And that sometimes, you know, gets me out of the box <laughs> and I can see it with greater clarity. So if I'm, here's a little out of the box way of viewing what I said. If I'm driving in my car and there's a traffic jam, so I'm sitting in my car and I have no choice. I have no choice. I'm sitting there. I can't go forward. I can't go backward. I just know that the timing that I had planned on getting to my destination is now changed. And I'm going to sit in my car for maybe an extra 20 minutes before I get to where I want to go. How I respond to this situation is my choice. I can sit there and go, oh my God, traffic, I'm so angry, which is a very natural reaction. I have been known to scream and pound the roof of my car on occasion. And um, I mean, that's a very natural response because what you want to do has now been stymied by something that's outside of your control. Or what I taught myself to do and I try to do is I go, oh, okay. So now I have some extra time for me. I'm always looking for time for me, you know, as a single mom who runs my own business. I'm like, oh, I wish I had some me time. I'm like, oh, look, I got some me time, some bonus me time. I have no choice on what's going on. So I may as well use this time to be very happy, to sing songs with the radio, to meditate lucidly because I don't want to like close my eyes and have an accident. I I take the situation and I fill it with an activity that makes me feel happy, full of gratitude, to give it an activity that normally I wish I had more time for. Now I have the time for it. And then I'm like, oh man, now the traffic's picked up and I'm going to where I'm going. Okay, well, that's good too. Now, Suppose I'm sitting in that traffic and it's not a big deal. I just like call my friend. Hey, I'm going to be 20 minutes. I do like, okay, no worries. Uh, why didn't I order dinner while, you know, outside of COVID times when we get socialized, then it's not that big a deal. Or now in COVID time, for me, it's not a big deal because, you know, <laughs> time has lost all meaning for, for me. But what if it was back when I had my corporate job and I have to get to a meeting and my boss is like texting me, where are you? Where are you? You know, we can't go forward without the spreadsheets you're supposed to bring in and all this pressure. Then what I'm reacting to is not this situation here. I'm reacting to something over there. My boss mad at me. And I'm like, oh, I'm so anxious. My boss is going to yell at me. And everyone's in. but it's still outside of my control. It's still my right to let my boss know this is beyond my control. I will get in when I get in. It's his choice or her choice, how they respond. But it's my choice then, say I still have 20 minutes, you know, assuming or whatever time to sit in my car and sing songs and meditate. And then when I arrive, they may be all stressed, but I will come in and I'm like, okay, here you go. Here's all the papers. Here's the this, this, and that. Um, while I was in the car waiting because there was an accident and I had no choice, 
um, I thought about this and I thought about that. I'm very lucid and clear. And that brings all of them together. It's like, okay, great. <laughs> and then we go forward. Generally at that point, someone's like, okay, before we start, I have to go to the bathroom. It's like, still another 10 minutes because now that I'm there, they're not ready. They've fallen apart. So again, like how we treat ourselves, this is always our choice. So I'm going to speak a moment about anxiety, depression, two things that are happening a lot right now on our planet, especially today, Valentine's Day. I think there's a lot of people where we can't get out and meet anyone. I'm single. I would love to like meet a special someone, but you know, not going to happen today, not going to happen this year. So I enjoy the love that I give to myself, the love that I share with people from a distance, the love of my immediate family, my chihuahua dog, my mean coon cat, <laughs> um, my love of that. But if I was thinking today about, you know, the love I cannot access, I would be filled with anxiety, depression, and again, for the purpose of this class, let's think of anxiety and depression as reactions, not actions. Frustration is what you want and what you get are not in cohesion. You know, like, I want to get to my job on time. There's a traffic accident 20 minutes later, angry boss. What I want is to get to my job on time. What I get is showing up late to a stressed out boss. So I'm frustrated. Frustration is a very natural response. The result of frustration can be anxiety, depression, anger, all of the stress-related emotions. And again, I'm not speaking about anything clinical or, you know, I'm just speaking in this specific metaphor, shall we say. So as you deal with frustration, the resulting emotions have a chance to represent themselves in a communicative manner and also be resolved so that you can choose how you feel as opposed to having a reactionary feeling. You know, I'm here alone in my home. Well, in one part of my home, my family's out there. I'm here alone talking with you all and um, it's Valentine's Day. I'm alone, I got no one. And when we're done with this, I'm gonna go cook dinner for my family as I do every night. And really I would probably be happy just having a bowl of Cheerios or something instead of a full dinner every night. So this creates in me a, what I wish was that I had a lot of friends around me, and, you know, maybe a special someone and, you know, didn't have to do chores every day. and you know, cook meals every night. And what I have is, you know, the opposite. So it's a frustration. It's my choice how I deal with this. I can become lonely, depressed, and like, it's so beyond my control. It's a pandemic. And we've got these idiots in politics who care more about their petty corruption and their games than about actually resolving these issues that are impacting all the rest of us. So I can become depressed or lonely, but when I feel anxiety, I'm like, okay, something's out of sync. How do I get it in sync? And I harmonize. There's literally nothing I can do about the pandemic. And there's nothing I can do about the politicians beyond what I already do. You know, voting, I write to my congressmen and senators all the time. I write to Nancy Pelosi and I write, write to the White House all the time. I mean, if they're representing me, then they better know what they're representing. I'm very outspoken in a polite way, of course. Um, you know, and yeah, I write to my governor. Like, I'm very outspoken. And if I'm going to say I'm doing everything I can, what can I do? 
I can let them know this is what they're representing. Um, and I leave these days when you call them, you just, you don't leave a voicemail. It's really easy. If you ever want to call your politicians, they're like, press one for this, two for that. They prompt and they're like, if you're for this or against it, and they just need to know the basic information, not the messages you have. So if you welcome to call your politicians as often as you want, very few of them will ever pick up the phone or even give you space to leave a voicemail. Um, okay, <laughs> so sorry, little rant. So I do what I can and the rest is out of my control beyond taking care of self. And part of taking care of self is when I feel anxiety, I go, okay, something's out of harmony here. And I know within me, I've got my little spark of love from my beginning, from all time, I've had this. And here I am in anxiety. What do I do to get it all in cohesion? Part of it is releasing responsibility. Okay, there's nothing I can do beyond what I'm doing about certain things. I'm doing everything I can to care for myself and my family, keeping us safe and healthy working hard on my little business and cutting back on expenses. You know, there are things we can do. Exercise every day. <laughs> some days are more chocolate than exercise. <laughs> there are some things that are out of our control. If it's out of your control and you are holding on to it and it's bringing you anxiety, there's going to be something in here that needs to be resolved acknowledged, released, because it's not in cohesion with your inner state of love. I'm telling you, it is okay to release anxiety. It is okay to release anything that is out of harmony with your inner state of love. You have full permission from source, from reality, to believe whatever you want to believe. You have full permission to love yourself and fully accept yourself. What is expected is you will not force your beliefs on anyone else and that your beliefs will not bring harm to anyone else and that you will be respectful to all other beliefs that are not forced upon anyone and do not bring harm to anyone. These are the rules, as I have been taught. These are the rules. You may think or believe whatever you like. You may not harm anyone, and you may not force anyone to share your beliefs. No one may harm you, and no one may force you to share their beliefs. But it is okay for us to have a variety of beliefs. If someone's belief is bringing you harm, it is your right to separate from them in whatever level is healthy for you. And it is absolutely okay for you to love yourself. So how do we do this? I'm gonna show you a little something. Here, let me, uh, hold on a moment. No, that's not it. Okay, I'm going to switch my background picture. Here we go. Okay, you see this? <laughs> These are pictures of me taken with my aura camera. Normally, my aura is like pale green and pale blue with white. That's my like normal day-to-day -day aura. When I fill myself with love, this is what happens to my aura. Just with the thought of love and with acknowledging I can receive love, my aura goes from green and blue, which is about healing, healing and nurturing on all levels, physical, psychological, spiritual, um, energetic, naturally, for people, for animals, for the planet. I'm like all about healing energy flowing through me. But when I think about love, I turn all purple, golden, pink, 
and all the shades within. Just with the thought of love. I'll just sit there and for one minute, think about nothing but love. So why don't you all join me for a moment? And of course, we don't have my aura camera with you guys, but this is what happens. Now, each of us has our own colors. There are some people I know, they're born with an aura color and they go their whole life with that aura color. That's because they're here for a purpose, a very specific purpose that aligns with this aura. I'm here for the purpose of helping, of teaching of teaching and teaching people how to heal themselves. That's my purpose, how to heal yourself, how to heal your planet. That's the whole reason I'm here. Therefore, my aura changes depending on my emotions because I'm always connecting with others very empathically, empathetically. My aura will change. Like we used to photograph me over a period of like, you know, 10 or 20 minutes. And I could just change every single shot. I could have a different aura just by changing my thoughts. So that's who I am. Who you are, you know, get to know yourself, see who you are. But I can tell you, when you think about love, you can flow with love. When you find any areas in your body that are screaming in pain, when you think of love, these are areas that specifically want to be filled with love. Like a little baby that's been separated from its mother. Going, oh, all this love. Where's my love? Where's mine? Send extra love and invite it to absorb. And if there's anything in there blocking it, give the block permission to leave for now. Say, you know what? I don't need to resolve you. I don't need to heal you. I don't even need to acknowledge you. Just for now, step aside. You can come back later if you want. But right now, we're just filling all of me with love. So let's go ahead and relax. It doesn't matter if your eyes are open or closed. Just allow yourself to relax. Give your body permission to manage itself. Think about love. Love is a wonderful mantra. Just sit there thinking love, love, love. Chanting the word love out loud or in your mind. It's a beautiful word filled with powerful energy. It doesn't matter what language you say it in, amor is the same frequency. There are so many types of love. Love flowing to you, love flowing from you, love that just surrounds us. As I said, each of us was born with a spark of love. It's not just people. Every animal on the planet has a spark of love. Every plant Every living being, even a blade of grass, has a spark of love. The air was originally born from love. The elements, everything in physical reality and everything in multidimensional reality was created through love. Gaia, our beautiful divine mother, goddess of all that is physical, once shared with us the story of how long ago there was just this beautiful energy just this beautiful energy, nothing else in reality. And one day, 
Gaia as part of this energy sort of turned around just as the divine father, the divine feminine, the divine masculine energy, the yin and yang turned and they faced each other. The moment they faced each other, recognition occurred and love happened. And from love, all reality was created in an instant. The angels were early in, which is why they're so full of pure love, because they're in the highest frequency of love. So many realities, dimensions, all just like flowed from love. Love literally created everything. So everything has within it the spark of love. As you are flowing, relaxing with love, look inside of yourself. Invite your spark of love that has been with you since you were first created, long before you became a human, long before you even thought about it, incarnation. This spark of love is part of the original you. Invite it to show itself, introduce itself to you. Invite it to like shine. Welcome this spark of love with your whole heart. Invite the spark of love to show its true self to you. Connect with this beautiful spark. This spark is you. This spark has been you through every life you've ever lived and all your time between lives. This is your truest, purest baby self, original baby self. This is the you that will always, always continue. Even when your soul has evolved to its highest level and then you morph into your next cycle of eternal being, this spark of pure love is the first part of you that existed and will continue through all your cycles of being, all of your evolutions. When you're done with a human, you may decide to incarnate with angels or Palladians or some other collective or race elsewhere for however long, and then go on to another race of beings, another dimension. But this spark will always be pure inside of you. Pure love. Purity. If you'd like, you can invite the spark to be more active in your life, more self representative as you are going through your many karmic lessons and ups and downs and tumultuous twists and turns of this life. You may invite the spark be an active part of your anatomy. Of your psyche. 
of your interpretation of self. You may say to yourself, I am a spark of pure love surrounded by a fascinating person, the physical body, who is one of many lives that I choose to live as my soul continues on its journey to evolve, to become a very wise, pure self. Embrace your inner spark. You can even look at as your inner spark grows within you, sort of qualities or one quality, be easy on yourself. Would you like to infuse with more of this love energy? Like perhaps you want a little more self-esteem or a little more boldness or a little more natural comfort. Like just sit for a moment with your spark, your spark of pure love. And look at what area, allow one word to just pop up in your mind. One area that this spark can easily, comfortably infuse with love to help you release some of this unnecessary anxiety, depression, whatever, self-sabotage, whatever issues we all have in life. We all do, all of us. Invite the spark to choose one to help you fill that with pure love, pure spark love. So this issue might become, I don't know, maybe more of a strength than a hindrance. Yeah, sit with your spark and see which part of yourself that lives beneath the frequency of love is ready to evolve. Okay, I'm going to switch my background browser again because we are going to do something very special and very wonderful. Isn't this beautiful, the new moon? And guess what we have outside in the skies right now? new moon. So as a special treat, this is especially for my students of my manifestation class. We just finished a very, you know, like month and a half long intensive program. Um, we are going to do a new moon spark love manifestation right now. And then in two weeks from today, I will be back right here. And we will do a full moon to continue and complete the process. Manifesting with the lunar cycle is very powerful um, activity done in cultures all around the planet. The new moon traditionally is when you plant the seeds of that which you wish to manifest. And then the full moon is when you harvest it, bring it to fruition. Today, we're planting the seed of inviting our 
pure spark of love to infuse some part of our being with this love and invite this aspect of self to grow and evolve. So this is not an instantaneous thing. This is not like when, like when I spoke up a week ago, I put it to my guides. I said, you know what? I am so upset that like four years ago, I was invited to be interviewed by, you know, a certain radio show that I really admired and I didn't take advantage of it. And now like, oh, I'm kicking myself. I wish I had done that interview the very next day. I just put it out to actually the librarians because they're always with me. I just put them literally the next day. I got an email from that exact radio show saying our researchers have noticed the work you're doing and we would like to interview you on our show. So I don't want to mention names, anything because I, um, well, you know, because we're still working things out, <laughs> but that's an instantaneous manifestation because I practice this a lot. I put it out there. I get it back. I said, I wanted a house two weeks later. I have this beautiful house that and I didn't want to get a mortgage. Someone gave me all the money. So I got a beautiful house for free. That's instantaneous manifestation. And I love teaching that stuff to anyone who wants to learn. What we're doing now, it's much more gentle. We are inviting a manifestation to grow, to grow. And what you'll find is by the time it's reached its fruition, it will feel so natural. You won't even remember a time that you had whatever issue. Now, I'm not saying guaranteed in two weeks that will happen, but it will happen. It will happen. The first time I practiced this, self-sabotage was definitely my issue. And self-sabotage invited itself to come and work with the new moon manifestation. Um, it was so funny. In fact, I was got in the car to drive to the, uh, and what came on the radio, Beastie Boys Sabotage. <laughs> so, you know, everything was coming into place for that. That was definitely like uh, the element of myself that wanted to be evolved. After two weeks, when the full moon came, I could feel how much more comfortable I was with going forward without the extra weight and process that I always put myself through by constantly sabotaging myself. And later, like I still had the many ingrained lifelong habits, but when they come up, I immediately recognized them and was like, oh, yeah, you, yeah, we don't need to do that anymore. We have a new habit now. And the self-sabotage would go, oh, okay. So it doesn't necessarily 100% resolve it, but it does set you on patterns that make it something that you're like, I don't even need to do that anymore. It doesn't even need to come here. And it may happen in a day, two weeks, a few months, but invite it to just work on its own natural path, its own natural way without any extra unnecessary expectations. Just with, as I showed with my love colors, when I think about love, my actual aura changes very quickly. When you think about beautifully growing with the cycle of the moon, the natural love that is within each of us, this love that is within you, the spark love, inviting it, just infuse an issue so the issue can lighten up. By the time you get to the full moon, if you think about this daily or throughout the day, I guarantee by the time you get to the full moon, you will feel a difference. I guarantee it is inevitable. So relax, return to your state of comfort and connection with your beautiful spark, your little spark of pure, innocent love that will never, ever stop being. 
a spark or an innocent love. This is an integral part of your soul, in the core of your soul. That's a whole other lesson. <laughs> but I will tell you this. You are always connected with your soul, and your soul is always sending energy to you through a few different pathways, but one is from the spark of pure, innocent love in the core of your soul to the spark of pure, innocent love in your core. One of the easiest ways to connect with your soul and to get more help as we're going through our lives is to connect with your spark of pure love and just send your awareness and energy on up through to the spark of pure love in the core of your soul. And from there, talk to your soul. Hey, you know, it's a little rough down here. Can you please send me a little more love? Send some help. Your soul will respond. Your soul wants you to do well. So I encourage all of you to practice this. So bring your awareness back your beautiful core of being, your beautiful spark self of pure love is within you. Invite it blowing on embers to expand. So that you can just fill your core with for me, it's a lovely, warm sense of love. Like when the fire in the fireplace is sending heat out, even though it's still embers, still embers, it's radiating a beautiful heat filling, filling the space. And you may find, like for me, I'm feeling it here. You may find you're feeling it here or here, wherever you're feeling it, here in your gut, wherever you're feeling it is the natural place for you to feel it at this moment. So feel welcome to just be one with yourself. And invite this spark to expand. As I said, everything, everything was created from an original spark of love, including the moon. The moon has within it an original spark of love. As you can connect with your soul, you can connect with the original spark of in the moon. I mean, I know the moon was created when space debris hit Earth early in our cycle and it was flown out from there, but trust me, trust me, astrophysics, geophysics aside, there's a beautiful spark of pure love put in there for our beautiful divine mother. There is a soul in the moon, just as there's a soul within each of us, and there is a soul in our beautiful planet Earth. Invite the spark of your pure, innocent love within you to welcome connection with the spark of pure, innocent love in the moon. And invite the moon to send its beautiful lunar magic into you, surrounding your spark love, filling you to support you with that powerful magnetic pull that the moon has on to help with this metamorphosizing process. Just as the moon, as it goes from sliver, new moon, to 
moon pulls the tides. Invite the moon to pull from you whatever you do not. And invite the tides to fill love into you. Love flows in. Walks float out. The moon is a powerful, powerful siren. And know that as the moon grows over the next few weeks to fruition, this process will continue and continue. Beautiful. I invite the pure spark of love that's within you to flow out, to be as bright as a shining star, to be one with our beautiful moon. Oh, that is so beautiful. Thank you all. So, as I said, um, the librarians really wanted me to share this lesson today. Practice it daily. Um, you may return to my video. I will put this up on my YouTube channel so you can access it. If you'd like, practice this daily and you will find a change will happen. You don't need to journal it or document it. You will feel it. You will. I want to tell you if anything rises up that fills you with, you know, feelings below the frequency of love, quite often that is a repressed memory or emotion. That's trying to get your attention so you can release it. But don't be afraid of anything that rises up. Just acknowledge it and say, would you like to leave now? Would you like to go back to your soul family? But remember, energy doesn't really get born or die. It merely changes shape. It changes frequency. If there's energy within you that is below the frequency of love. It is possible this energy would rather go elsewhere so it can also return to the frequency of love. Just trying to get your attention so you can release it. That's a whole other class that I teach as well. Oh, thank you all. Thank you so much. I will be back here in two weeks, this exact time, 3 to 4 p.m. on Sunday in two weeks. And um, we will do a full moon manifestation. If you'd like to join me between now and then, every Wednesday night, I channel messages and lessons from the librarians of the Akashic Records. You can access it through my website, bonitawoods.org. I'll put the link. And I want to thank you all for the lovely hearts and comments that I'm getting. Thank you. I will say um, in six days on the 20th, Kim, the Time Master, is going to teach a time bending class at bonitawoods.org. Oh, thank you. I love you too. You. Um, thank you for all the beautiful comments and the many hearts like, oh, you're filling me with such joy.
So I'll put a link to Kim's class. This is amazing. Kim teaches us how to make time move slower, make it move faster, how to sort of like, like I studied with her. And then the next thing I knew, I was actually seeing like short distances ahead in time. Um, thank you. Uh, do I have a recording of this new moon meditation? I will put this on YouTube. I also have um, cord cutting meditations for free on my website, Bonita Woods. So I'll also put a link in the comments to that. And there's a number of full moon, new moon. And there's one where I think we joined the mermaids in the new moon. That was really fun. Uh, meditations for cord cutting and manifestation often go together because cord cutting is releasing what does not serve so that you can be open to what does serve. And cord cutting also, you can never sever love. All it does is it cleanses and magnifies love. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, so yes, I do have a number of lunar manifestation and cord cleansing, energy cleansing meditations on my website. I'll put the link here. but. My website's easy. It's named after me. So thank you all. Have a wonderful, wonderful Valentine's Day. <sighs> we get to be in love with ourselves. I hope that each of you was so happy seeing this beautiful, eternal spark of love within you. Think how magnificent we are. Each of us is like an eternal spark of love having a lot of carnations of experiences. We're all pretty cool. Have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful day. Bye.